preparing for the message. Okay? There were two messages which I was preparing. Okay? The first one that I picked up, I did not somehow I did not feel like uh, sharing. Then I had to prepare on one particular subject. Uh, so before I put up anything on the screen, I want you all to respond to me. Okay, as I ask you questions. Who is the most misunderstood person in the Bible? Who is the most misunderstood? Don't say your father or your mother. Okay, I know those fights will still keep going on in my homes. In the Bible, who is the most misunderstood and misrepresented? In the Bible? What? Apostle Paul, okay. Someone said Apostle Paul. Old Testament or New Testament? Whole Bible. Old Bible. Jesus, okay, Jesus. You also misunderstand Jesus. The world misunderstands Jesus. Some people don't even understand it completely. The most So the most misunderstood person within the church, I'm not talking about non-believers, Christians misunderstand and misrepresent one person in the Bible, the most, is the Holy Spirit. Yeah? I'm sure many of you are still in confusion to understand how he works and what he does, his works, how he is represented, or that is, how do you pronounce that? Anyone? Good. Good. So, Neumatology is nothing but study of the Holy Spirit, the doctrine that's a doctrinal word. So, we're going to look into the Bible, the Holy Spirit, since He is the most misrepresented and misunderstood. And the Bible says why, why we need to learn about Him because Jesus said, okay, all sins, sins will be forgiven. All the sins that we have committed under the sun and on the earth will be forgiven. But whoever blasphemies the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven in this age or in the age to come. So we've got to be very careful the way we represent him. That's why I said he's the most misrepresented and misunderstood person in the Bible. Yeah? And mostly it is the church who misrepresents him. That's when the world laughs at the Holy Spirit. He's the most classy person you can you can ever imagine. All the classy people of this world they put together in one line, they're not even come close under his feet, the dust of his feet. If I get to try to describe him. But he is the most you know, misrepresented and shown him as something you know untouchable. That's why most of the Christians, most of non-Christians do not come to church because people represent him weirdly. I don't want to take other words because it's not true. Okay? The phrase Holy Spirit, I, I like to give you some some basics. The phrase Holy Spirit occurs three times in the Old Testament. Okay? Only three times. In other words, we have Spirit of God and Spirit of God. That is Psalm 51 verse 11. Cast me not away from thy presence and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. If there is no Holy Spirit, you are automatically cast out. You see? Salvation is impossible without the Holy Spirit. Therefore, we cannot take it so take him so lightly. Holy Spirit is a person, it's not an it. We cannot call him it. The moment you say it, it becomes a thing. He is a person with emotions, he is a person who can understand, he is a person with creativity, he is a person not I cannot say with creativity, he himself is a creativity. He himself 
is life. He does not give life. He himself is life. Okay? To say that he has creativity, he has life, it's something of a lesser, you know, attributes, I would say. He himself is life. He does not have life. He himself is life. Isaiah chapter 63 verse 10 But they rebelled and vexed his Holy Spirit Therefore he was turned in to be their enemy Holy Spirit can be an enemy also And he fought against them He fights, he fights battles If we turn against him Isaiah chapter 63 verse 11 then he re remembered the days of old Moses and his people uh, saying, Where is he that brought them up out of the sea with the shepherd of his Lord? Where is he that put his Holy Spirit within him? Okay. So those are the three scriptures. Talks about the word Holy Spirit. It's nothing but the Spirit of God or uh, the Spirit. One and the same. The phrase Holy Spirit occurs in New Testament 93 times. The Old Testament usually refers to the Holy Spirit as a spirit. Okay? In Genesis we read as my spirit. Genesis 1 2, Genesis 6 3. Yeah? The Spirit of the Lord hovered over the earth and, and then what happened? Yeah? Creation. Creation. So, you need to understand here. Before God could speak anything, the Holy Spirit moved. You understand this? How many of you know? Before God spoke, Holy Spirit, everything happened simultaneously. If there is no Spirit of God, there is no Word of God. Okay? Right from the beginning. The Spirit goes, God speaks. It's like that. You cannot say, brother, I don't, I don't have the Holy Spirit, but I teach, I sing, I play music. No, it's not going to happen either. You are inspired because you are inspired to do the work of God because of the Holy Spirit. You cannot do it by your own self. Some of you maybe you had a hard time worshiping God today, but as the worship began, maybe you know something just you know erupted in, in your spirit that you started to connect. Especially when they sang this Hindi song, I was able to connect. Yeah, the new Akes to the Kaunda. That's all. To her structures in Dark Buddha. That, that was really picks me up. The Spirit of God is invisible. John chapter 3 verse 8. Uh, I have not put a few verses uh, you know, on the screen because I want someone to read because every week I've been putting and I see that people are just sitting at the screen, not opening the Bibles. Yeah. John chapter 3 verse 8 and someone please read you can take the mic and read The wind blows where it wishes and you hear it sounds but we do not know where it comes from or where it goes so it is with everyone who is born of spirit You see Jesus is telling that the Holy Spirit is like a wind How many have you, how many have you seen wind? You seen wind? No? Which means it doesn't exist? It does exist, right? But you cannot sing. Same way, the Holy Spirit does exist, but we cannot sing. Even with God. He is immaterial. Holy Spirit is immaterial. Have you ever seen? Uh, Ever, ever heard that the uh, Holy Spirit is being worshipped as an object? Ever, ever read in the Bible? Seen anywhere in the churches putting up? No. He's imitated. Now I'm just giving you all these points. He is powerful. Acts chapter 2 verse 2. It says when he... You know, every time the Holy Spirit came, the, the, the Bible says... The place shook. Yeah? A lot of people think the moment you talk about Holy 
is for the first thing that enters into the mind is talking in tongues. Tongues. You know what? What happens if you read the whole Bible? I want someone to read it. Acts chapter 4, verse 31, just keep it open. Even before you speak, okay? Do not read that, just keep it open. Even before you speak the tongue, the Bible says every time you spoke in tongue, the place was shook. Okay? So you're not meeting the first criteria, and people are speaking tongues in the churches. Yeah? Tongues doesn't mean that, well, tongues, but I'm not talking about the Bible, I'm talking about people who speak tongues today. Just because they speak in tongues doesn't mean they have the Holy Spirit. Most of, I can say blindly, 98% is emotionally poor. How can you say that? You can just say it through the lifestyle. The Bible says, can someone read that? 4, 31, Acts chapter 4, 31. When they are filled with the Holy Spirit, what happened? And when they had prayed, the place was shaken where they were assembled together, and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost. And they spoke the word of God in boldness. What? When they spoke, okay, when they were filled with the Holy Spirit, what happened? They spoke in tongues. What? Boldly. Boldly they spoke the word of God. I know a bunch of people, youngsters and even from my uh, no, previous church, they speak tongues. Okay? They speak tongues so loudly, you should run away from them. That's how they speak. They roll on the tongue. Okay? They won't even show gospel to the neighbor. Is that the Holy Spirit? You claim that you are speaking in tongues, you don't even share gospel to your friend next to you. That is not the Holy Spirit. Then what is that you are talking? Gibberish. That's what it is. The Bible says, when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, they spoke and people could actually understand. Holy Spirit is not something that gives you uh, excitement to speak tongues. Tongues was a sign for the Jews to know that God is real among them, even among the Gentiles. We have seen that last time, right? Okay? So if you read Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Spirit came on the day of Pentecost, it was something that could understandable. The people who came, okay, that was the day when, you know, they celebrated Pentecost is nothing but they came, uh, people from different uh, uh, countries came to Jerusalem to celebrate the festival and they were in, you know, surprised to see Jews who do not know these languages. They were speaking other languages which the other people could understand. And they, they said, you know, how is this? They are praising God in different languages. In languages that we speak. So God used that as a sign, saying that the Spirit of God has fallen on them. That was a communication. Today someone speaks, you know, the most, uh, most of the repetitive words would be Shabalaka, whatever. Yeah? That is the only thing, repetitive. That's not the Holy Spirit, guys. You are know, mostly caught up in emotion. Emotions, that's it. You say that you are talking in Holy Spirit, the next week they will be talking about the new movie which came. A um, bunch of guys uh, had a service, they spoke in tongues, jumped, they thought it was the Holy Spirit, they rolled on the, uh, you know, on the ground. The next week, there was some celebrity who came and, they sang, and he sang some, uh, you know, singer songs. The, what is the guy's name? I don't know. Some famous singer came to Hyderabad and he was singing, singing that second song. They all ran and they jumped there also. Here the Bible says, when the Holy Spirit came, they spoke boldly the word of God. Wherever they went, they spoke the word of God. That is it. That is the sign that you have received the Holy Spirit. Not jumping on the ground and rolling over. Yeah? You know who rolled on the ground in the Bible? Yeah, how many of you know who rolled on the Bible when, the, uh, when something happened to him, he rolled and he fell. There was a boy, there was a boy who was possessed with a demon. 
The Holy Spirit is the most classic person. I hear about people clapping at one man. Why? I don't want to keep clapping at one. See this? Did you ever see Jesus, you know? The Bible says when Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit, he went and he preached. He did not say fire, 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 and people were falling, clapping and jumping like one man. When the Holy Spirit comes, you will be in your right mind and right attitude. You will speak intelligible words which people can understand. And with the wisdom that you carry, the opposite person or the one who is uh, opposing your faith cannot stand. That is the wisdom of God. That is the Spirit of God. Not the one who will, you know, come and come and what is this people like, you know, devils. So many, so many of my friends, okay, I mean, before I became their friends, they were scared of Christians, few of them. They were scared of Christians, they never want to enter church because they were jumping like mad. Especially some people, denomination, they, all the time they are jumping. They are shouting like a mad. Don't know if it is, a, is it, it is a church or it is a what? What is it? <laughs> and uh, once I began, you know, once I got introduced to my friends, the radical friends, then I showed all the scriptures to them. And then I said, why these Christians are doing like this? Because of which we were scared. You see the wrong impact. When we do not have the word of God. That's how you end up emotionally, huh? crazily, what not? Have you ever seen Jesus say that whenever Jesus went and he was, you know, he was full of the Holy Spirit, right? If ever any, any person has ever been full of the Holy Spirit, it is the Lord Jesus, right? How many of you believe that? How many of you know that Jesus was filled with the Holy Spirit? Yeah? The moment he was filled with the Holy Spirit, the Bible says he was taken into temptation. Yeah? He was tempted. After that, he said, Repent. Repent. Who is the Holy Spirit? How many of you believe that Holy Spirit is God? I don't want to stress on that because you know He is God, right? The word holy is often used as an object. Now, I don't know, I want to say all these things, but. Adjective describing the Spirit of God because there are many cults who have come saying that Holy Spirit is different, the Spirit of God is different. Therefore, there are more, more than three persons in the Trinity. You're getting this, right? The other, the other day we were uh, debating the Jehovah Witness. That's all we are talking. Okay, we believe in three gods. Okay, Holy Spirit, then who is the Spirit of God? Then who is the Spirit? Okay, someone who is mentally challenged will talk to that. The, holy, the word holy refers to sacredness, spotless, purity, separateness. Just like you know, Jesus had Christ. Christ is not the last name of Jesus. Okay? The anointed. Christ is the anointed. His name is Jesus. Holy Spirit is something like that being attached to, describing that he is holy, spotless, separate. Basically means set apart. That's why. When you are filled with the Holy Spirit, you do not act like the world. That's why I keep stressing this. When you, are, when you are born again, when you claim that you have the Spirit of God, you do not act like the world. Because the Holy Spirit lives in you. You cannot go and jump like the non-believers in the DJ parties, in the pubs and clubs. That will not allow you to do. If you are doing so, you are not filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Bible says, uh, in Romans it says, Whoever does not have the spirit of Christ does not belong to Christ. No, what does it say? If you do not belong to Christ, what does it mean? You are not born again. You are not going to heaven. Is that true? What I said? No? You can raise your hands, that's fine. You are confused? Am I here so far? See, that's what the Holy Spirit it's not like any other spirit. Holy Spirit. We will not act like the world. We will not go, we will not become so excited like, excited like the world. When the movie, movie came as RR, when, when RR was, you know, RRR was released, people were just rushing to go to watch that movie. Have you been? 
I'm good. We all are thinking of this. But your heart was so moved to go and watch that movie, then for sure you can say you're not catching the spirit. Yeah? What? Some people are like, well, this is. Where did I come? Okay, let me quote some scriptures. Whoever loves the world, the love of the Father is not in them. Allah does it belong to heaven? Well, then what are you doing with it? Not only in that movie, any movie, I'm not telling that was specific movie because uh, you know me and Sam were discussing and that movie was released. Even Christians are like so excited posting, you know, the ad and they were like so enthusiastic to go and promote this ad and the dance, stupid dance, I don't know why uh, jumping, <laughs> no different than someone who claims to be a Holy Spirit people who keep jumping. <laughs> there is no difference with that spirit and this spirit. Yeah? And they call it talent. How many of you know that that kind of a dance uh, is heavenly? Bahubali is heavenly? What are the famous movies that you know people that this world boasts about? Is it heavenly? The Bible says we are strangers here. Strangers friends? You know what 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 a stranger's attitude is? He works as if nothing relates to him. I don't know anyone here. That's what stranger is. We are strangers in this world, I have nothing to do with this world. That's how we want to live. As Christians, if you are not living like that, then take it to heart. You are not filled with the Spirit of God. Yeah? That's what it says. Holy Spirit means, shut up. You are holy. Now, yes, sometimes you fall and later on you regret saying that. You know, why did I do that? Why did I do this? Why did I watch this? Then you have Holy Spirit. If you're just casually walking, you know, walking and you know, looking whatever you want, talking whatever you want, doing whatever you want, then there is a problem. You're not having the spirit of God. You're not born again. Simple as it is. And therefore there is a need for you to call upon the name of the Lord and to be saved. And that kind of a conviction only comes when the Holy Spirit enters your heart. Now that, that is a word mentioned in the Old Testament, Kadesh. You know, that song is there, right? Kadesh, Kadesh. Right? So that is a good word. So the new mythology that I was talking about, it was when it was God translated in Greek, that's when the word came new. Okay? Which means wind, breath, and spirit. John chapter 3, if you already read, the wind bloweth where it So, when you are, you are that word, Holy Spirit, okay, wind, breath, and spirit, that's how they. You know, try to uh, talk to people when explaining Holy Spirit. Even Jesus did that, right? Right there. He said, when the wind blow it, well, listen, uh, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whether it goeth. So is everyone that is born of the Spirit. Okay? So he's comparing it with the wind. Revelation chapter 11 verse 11 and after three days, three days and a half, the spirit of life from God entered into them and they stood up to their feet. You see, the spirit of God, the spirit of life, the spirit of God, Holy Spirit, nothing but the same. The Holy Spirit is necessary for our resurrection. You see? Therefore, we cannot take it so lightly. Don't say, I don't want to learn about the Holy Spirit. If I know just about Jesus, that is enough. No. We've got to know who the Holy Spirit is. I spoke to many of the uh, you know, youngsters where they say, Oh, this is a very complicated subject, brother, because you know, I get confused when I talk about the Holy Spirit because some churches represent him as you know, jumping jack, the other, the other as boldness, the other this and that. But the Bible 
gives so little importance to Holy Spirit that even if you have to resurrect, you need Holy Spirit. Without the Holy Spirit, you will not be resurrected. And they stood and they stood upon their feet, and the great fear fell upon them which saw them. That is talking about the two witnesses. So these are the few symbols that was given in the Bible, okay? As to represent the Holy Spirit, clothing, symbolic of protective power. Okay? Tao. Remember? Tao. Now don't keep a picture of Tao and worship it. Fire. Don't light a fire and worship it. Or try to even jump in. Wanting to be filled. <laughs> okay? Fire. Oil. Those are the scriptures I'm giving you so that you would go home and what? Green. Oil. Symbolic. Water. John chapter 7, verse 30 to 39. You want me to read it out? Is it visible? Yeah. Visible. You can just take a picture once everything comes up. Wind. Wind, you already know. Earnest. Symbolic of gallery. Seal. Symbolic of ownership. How many of you know he's a seal? Seal of the Holy Spirit. Now, when? You know, most of the people think that in the vision it says, when you're born again, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. Doesn't mean. Doesn't mean that you are always saved. No, no. Just because it says the seal of the Holy Spirit, you are saved always, so therefore you can just go live like anything. No. The Spirit of God is sealed either for salvation or for judgment. Okay? We have so many titles. These are the titles. Tell me the titles, right? How many of you know these titles? Comforter and counselor. Counselor. Wow. So John chapter 14, verse 17. But the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things. What? Few things. What? All things. Therefore, you need to have Holy Spirit to learn. Not Google and YouTube, no matter how many Googles and links that you follow, you still not get it. You do not have the Holy Spirit. It is He who has to reveal. That's when you will understand. Yeah? So when you go home today, the Bible says, if you ask Him in His name, that Jesus is the one who will send Him. Okay? In His name, you will be given Holy Spirit. So you got to pray in Jesus' name so that you would receive the Holy Spirit to understand who He is. Because without Him, we can do nothing. He, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. Whatsoever, who said? I said, not what your vision said, your dreams said, your feelings or emotions said. So which means, Whatever he said, he, the Spirit of God, will bring it to remembrance, which means you need to open and read first what he said. You know, remembrance means something that you have gone through already, right? You're getting this, right? You just cannot say that you're a Christian and you can just say it and the scripture automatically won't come. You have to open, read, read it, read and read it, and there will be a time when the necessity comes. The Spirit of God will bring the word what you think. Especially when you are witnessing. That is true in my case, in many of people's case, I am telling you in my case because I have the experience. Whenever you face, you, you face to defend your faith, the Spirit of God will remind you only which you read or even heard. Scriptures I am talking about, that's what it says. And bring all things to your remembrance. Remembrance is something that we have already gone through. Yeah? And whatsoever I have said. So whatever Jesus said, he will bring to remembrance. Isaiah chapter 11, 
11 verse 2 And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him The spirit of wisdom and understanding The spirit of counsel and might The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord You see? How many attributes? So he is a great counsel You don't have to run behind people and elders And someone that you inspire Now obviously you have to go But not all the time not all the time, guys. You cannot keep calling you know, the, uh, your elders, your someone who that is not all the time. Yeah, there is a time that you depend upon them, but that is just for a start, a kick start. But as you keep going, you have to depend by yourself on the Holy Spirit and the Word of God. Yeah? Because that will just give you a kick start. Because that will not keep your salvation. You need to know for yourself who the Holy Spirit is. And that is only through the scriptures. Comforter. Counselor. Yeah? So when he is your counselor, he will tell you what to watch and what not to watch, where you need to you know, participate and what, what is the church, what is not the church, this and that, everything he will counsel. He will bring, he will be your counselor and he will bring everything to remembrance for the scriptures. Holy Spirit is called God. How many of you have doubt? Yeah? Do you believe that He is God? Amen. So we will see the scripture. Acts chapter 3 verse, or chapter 5 verse 3 to 4. The Bible says, we all know this story. And I understand. The two people who got judged. It says, but Peter said, okay, before I read this, okay, there are these two couples, okay, who, who sow their land and the purpose for selling the land is to give it to the ministry. What they did is, they actually decided that they want to give all the amount, but the wife would, you know, would say, let us keep some money aside. And later on, what happens is they go and give that money, the leftover money. They kept some money aside and they would go and give that which, you know, they had and they went and kept it at the disciples' feet. Okay? And following that, this comes. But Peter said to Ananias, why had Satan filled thine heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? To whom did they lie? Holy Spirit and kept back part of the price of the land. They kept some money uh, from the land they sold little money they kept it as a savings while it's while uh, okay price of land whilst it reminded was it not thy own and after it was sold was it not in thy own power why has thou convinced uh, conceived this thing in thy heart thou hast not lied unto men but unto God first he Holy Spirit. In the end, he said he lied to God. What does it mean? Holy Spirit is God. Get in this one, right? Lie to the Holy Spirit. Lie to God. Which means, Holy Spirit is God. And after that, what happens, you know? The moment he died, the Bible says, he fell down and he died. You know, who, 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 fell, who fell down? When the judgment came upon them, they fell. Not when the Holy Spirit came, fell, rolled, no, no. It is quite opposite what the Bible says. And what we see in the churches is quite opposite. You know, people say fire, touch, and then fall off. That is not the Holy Spirit. Don't be, don't uh, play with the Spirit. That is, that is, that is not the power of God. That is not the Holy Spirit of God. You never see the Bible falling like that. Show me one scripture. I'll give you one week of time. Probably next Next day, this month, you can come and share. Show me one scripture where they actually fell. I will quit preaching. I'm not, I'm not uh, saying this for the sake of saying. I will quit preaching. Yes, So to lie to the Holy Spirit is to lie to God. Simple. Yeah. 
So I will uh, quickly go to one last question. Okay? We have a lot of things that I want to bring up. These are something don't get scared. These are something I'll share next time. Okay? So, so far, so far you are clear about the whole script to the point that I try to make understand. Okay. So that one question I want to ask, can we pray to the Holy Spirit? Was it there? Through the Spirit, yes. Can we pray to the Holy Spirit? I'm talking about to the Holy Spirit? Yes. Dear Holy Spirit, please give me this. Please give me that. No, we cannot go pray to the Holy Spirit. The Bible says in John chapter 16, verse 23 to 24, please, please, Raman, none, of the, none of the prayers that you offer in the name of the Holy Spirit will never be answered. John chapter 16, verse 23 to 24. In that day, day, you will ask nothing of me. Truly, truly, I say to you, whatever you ask of the Father in my name. In whose name? Okay? Salvation is called in no other name but whose name? Jesus' name. And that Jesus' name is revealed only through Holy Spirit. You cannot pray to Holy Spirit. You can pray that brothers through Holy Spirit only in the name of Jesus. Yeah? So just that I did it, uh, you know, uh, revealed so many things. You go home and speak to the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Holy Spirit, I want this and that. Nothing is going to be answered. Yeah? That's the heads up. Whatever you ask in Jesus' name, okay, only that will be answered. Yeah? Confused? We will see the other part of it next week probably, whenever we have time, okay? So let's close our hearts, eyes, and lift up our hearts to the Lord and pray. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for this wonderful time that you've given us, Father. To know about your Holy Spirit, Father. We thank you, Lord, for your scriptures. We thank you, Lord, for this time that you've given us, Lord. Help us, Father, not to go beyond your scriptures, Lord. Help us not to become puffed up in our minds, to think anything that comes into our mind, Father. But help us to only believe what the scripture reveals, Father. Help us not to add anything to it and help us not to take away from it, Father. Help us, O God, to be responsible the way we deal with the Holy Spirit, O Father. For we know your Spirit, O Father, grieves when we do not live up according to your word. Help us, O Father, O Lord Jesus, to understand more of your Holy Spirit and reveal your Holy Spirit to us so that we may be the kind of a person that you have called us to be and to live a life of witness among the non-believers, O Father who would know the true Holy Spirit of God and help us also to, also to share with our family and friends who He is. We thank You and we praise You for this time. We come in every person who is, uh, who is here, the Father, and, and for the people who have not made it to Father today, we pray that You would be with them, protect them and guide them and keep them in safety, O Lord. Remember the families and friends of Father God, God Lord, I pray, as they go, as they leave this place, be with them, protect them, O Father, let them reach them place of safety and be a witness of Father. Bring everything into remembrance whatever that has been taught here today. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen.